last year, the beloved student newspaper, The Tech, ran its parody issue with the front page story, MIT student startup destroys economy. Course six, without Hass exposure, deemed a national security threat. Funny, but not too much. Most of, most of you will remember that at MIT, Hass is the acronym for the humanities, arts, and social sciences, the collectively known as the humanistic fields. The text story also quoted a person the writer named Dean Melissa Gracefields, saying, these students never took a single one of their Hass classes seriously. If they had, we wouldn't be in this situation right now. You know, that sounds exactly like something I would say. I'm Melissa Nobles, Dean of the School of Humanities, Arts, and Social Sciences, and it sounds like something I would say because it conveys things I know to be true. There's always a bit of truth in humor. In the text story, there are also two related truths that I like to focus on. The first is that computer science students without exposure to the humanistic fields are national security threats. <laughs> the same is true for all of the engineering and scientific disciplines for that matter. Knowledge from the humanistic fields is crucially important in the development of new technologies. Look, you all know this. New technologies can change human existence in powerfully good ways. The use of big data helps in disease diagnosis and treatment. Computer technologies have connected the world as never before. But it is also true that many of us have concerns about technology. These concerns relate to foundational matters that are explored in MIT's humanistic fields, including what it means to be human across many times and places, how to understand the complexities of the human world, as well as some of the most consequential questions of any age, among them, what values can sustain and guide us? Then there's a second truth. Too many MIT students don't take their HAS classes seriously enough at first. Now, of course, many of our students do take the HAS classes seriously, but there are still some students who still don't fully realize uh, at first just how uh, important these classes are. And there are several reasons for that. The first is the misconception that our classes aren't rigorous and that the skills developed in our classes aren't what employers are looking for and aren't what's needed to be a successful entrepreneur. Of course, the idea that our classes are easy gets disproved immediately after students take a, a couple of them. That's when students begin to realize that rigor can mean many things. They find, for example, that our theater arts classes are rigorous in their creative training that helps to develop self-awareness and superb skills in communications and collaboration, a lifelong skill set for strategic expression. And those of you here tonight who are out in the world, you know that skills that were once described as soft are now actually power skills. Critical thinking, persuasive communication, and teamwork are all absolutely essential in today's world of work. The good news is that views have been changing fast on campus and the new MIT Schwarzman College of Computing is accelerating the Institute's efforts to teach, hab to teach students habits of mind and action that integrate scientific, technological, and humanistic knowledge. So I'd like to tell you about two of those classes in my school that do just that. This semester, the philosophy department is offering a class called The Ethics of Technology. This class introduces students to the tools that philosophical ethics by applying them to contemporary issues. So students learn how to think about privacy and surveillance, data bias, fairness, morality within technology, and about how to incorporate ethics into engineering in a more intentional way. This class is based on the insights of Abby Jakes, a recent MIT PhD graduate in philosophy. So Abby developed a two-week hands-on workshop for MIT students who were interested in ethical design. Students came with their different engineering projects to learn how to more deeply think about what they were making, why it mattered, and to who. Students were asked to envision good futures and bad futures, and to think about the full range of stakeholders. Now, the students could easily identify prospective customers, the people who would buy their products. They were less able to identify who might be harmed, either directly or indirectly, by their products. And finally, students were asked to identify their values. 
The point of this process is to encourage students to think about the larger human and social context of their work at every step. So the students gave the workshop great reviews. But better still, better still, they reported that they would use the tools about how to design ethically in future projects. The second class, Data and Politics, is taught by political scientist Danny Hidalgo. He's the guy on the left. As we all know, big data is changing politics, for better and for worse. Coders and quants with sophisticated data analysis skills are replacing traditional campaign professionals. And candidates and parties now spend huge sums on data sets. Some of these changes are regarded as modernizing, but others worry that big data analysis leads to more division among citizens. Look, there is no doubt that big data and new technologies are changing the practices of electoral politics. Professor Hidalgo recognizes that this trend is unlikely to change, and so he's teaching our students how to understand it. The fact that big data use seems inevitable does not absolve us of the responsibility to think about what these trends mean for democracy. So, was Dean, Grace, was Dean Gracefuls right in arguing that the destruction of the world's economy could have been avoided if MIT students had taken their HAS classes more seriously? I say yes. In their humanistic studies, MIT students are learning about all that's at stake, from democracy to justice to individual privacy, as they head out to help shape the future. Technology is not created in a vacuum. Technology is made by humans, and it profoundly shapes human lives and activities. And increasingly, MIT students recognize that MIT's humanistic fields powerfully equip them to, to successfully negotiate and to, and to contribute to the well-being of a complicated and interconnected world. And that's how we're helping to make a better world.